Kia ora. Today at Future Designers, we're going to talk about milk bottle plastic and how you can use this to make uh, different lights. Uh, milk bottle plastic is made from high density polyethylene and it's a thermoform plastic. So there are two types of plastic, thermoform and thermoset. Thermoform plastic means you can keep remelting and reshaping it and thermoset plastic uh, once it's set in place, you can't remelt it. So this is a really good one if you want to do things at home and because you can remelt it. The milk bottle caps, which are coloured, you can also remelt. But we're just going to look at this plastic today because it's translucent, so you can control light quality through it. So we're just going to start off by cutting out some of the flat surfaces from the plastic. Um, you can also use the actual form for um, uh, creating curves. But we'll just start off. If you want to check out how to use your knife and your scissors, then check out our knife skills video. So I'm just going to start off by cutting a flat sheet. And I'm not going to be worried about making it particularly straight, I'm just freehanding it. But remember, I'm never cutting towards my fingers. Because that's a really good way to cut your fingers, which is painful. take my scissors because that's an easier way to get it in those corners sometimes. Once you've got your plastic cut, um, you might want to think about what you're going to do with your light. But if you're just wanting to experiment with the plastic, you can start off even at this stage. I'm going to cut mine into little strips. Um, a few thin strips so we can look at what those do and a few fatter bits so we can look at stretching and changing it. Okay, make sure you put your knives into a safe spot. I'm just going to clear this off. To form your plastic or melt it, you can heat it up in a whole lot of different ways. Uh, I'm going to use a iron today that's nice and uh, controllable and it's something everyone tends to have at home. Now, if you're using an iron or a sandwich press, the last thing you want to do is put the plastic straight onto it because it will melt on and stick. So we're going to just use some baking paper and we're going to sandwich the plastic between two sheets of baking paper so it doesn't uh, attach to the fabric or the ironing board underneath or to the iron. Now I also have some gloves here and that's because the plastic gets quite hot and it can be a little bit too hot to touch so I'm just protecting my hands just with some normal gloves. Gardening gloves would work, um, gloves for warmth, ski gloves might be a little bit too thick. Okay, so I'm going to just start with one of these big bits to show you a little bit about what happens when you're heated up. Okay, so I've got my plastic here sandwiched between my baking paper, and then I just run the iron over it. And as I run the iron over, there are a couple things that will happen. Baking paper will begin to move a little bit less, and the plastic will start becoming more translucent. So you know when it's gotten really soft, when it's completely translucent. So what I like to do is get it quite translucent all the way. And so then when I pick it up, you can sort of see it's really attached to the baking paper. Now, if I try and play with it at this stage, it's so soft, it's quite hard to form, and it will begin to stretch a little bit. So I just like to wait until it's a little bit white again and then you can pull off that plastic, I mean off the paper and you can start twisting or bending or shaping it into whatever form you want. So that's kind of a scrumpled form and that's nice and easy to um, do quickly. You can also do things like weaving uh, the plastic together and getting different textures through that. So if I take some of these strips that I've made and I lay them in a woven pattern, they're just an over, under, over, under, very simple one. Paper over the top. Now these are going to stick together a little bit like glue. So you just want to make sure that you're um, uh, making sure it's all lined up in the way you want before you put the iron on because once it's stuck together it's really hard to change. This is a bit of a bigger surface, so when you're going across a bigger surface, it can take a bit longer to heat up. 
And you'll notice with something like this that certain points of it heat up before others because you've got double layers of plastic so it can take longer for the heat to actually get through. Okay. Then I can open it up and you can see that that's become one, one piece. And as I pull that off, it can sort of slump against each other and stick so that's where you want to be careful so you can see here. That's gotten stuck together. You might want to wait for it to get a little bit cooler before you get it off. But it also shows you how you can start shaping and reattaching parts if you want even thicker layers to reform. And you can fold the plastic round. Uh, you can start going on diagonals to get more complex patterns. The other thing that you can do is use it to build a bit of shape. Now this one I'm going to use the iron upside down so you want to make sure you're going to prop it up with materials that aren't going to burn and you've got to be really careful not to burn yourself. It's something I would recommend um, having uh, one of your parents or someone double check it before you start. And a little bit more support would probably be a good idea here. And then I take a piece of the um, baking paper and I just put that over the top. Now I might secure this with a little bit of masking tape or something just to hold it there. Okay, so I'm just putting on a sheet of plastic there that I'm going to wait until it gets quite warm and it's already beginning to stick to the to the baking paper a bit and that's heating up and it's going to begin to turn a bit translucent. Now if I want to take, create more 3D forms, I can then build onto this and melt the pieces of plastic together. So I can use this bit of plastic and push it into that other one and just wait until they melt. And as you, just like before, the bits that are melting are becoming more translucent. And so when that top layer is becoming translucent too, you know it's actually taking form. And I'm going to take that off and let it cool. And you can see we've taken and begun to create a 3D form, which you can then curve and add more shape to if you want. Now what's nice here is that you're getting further and further away from the milk bottle. You're not seeing this and going, oh, that's a milk bottle. And I'll show you how that can begin to affect light. So once you've started playing with your milk bottle plastic and you've started making the forms, you really want to see what kind of effect it has on different lights. So this one here is just a sort of a massive squiggly uh, milk bottle plastic. But then when you start putting light underneath it, uh, it has different effects. And a cool white light is going to look and feel really different from a brighter, I mean from a warmer, softer light like this one here. Uh, these would be uh, accent lights, so little sparkle lights in the corner of your room. But you don't have to have that for um, using the bottle plastic. You can do larger lights or task lights as well. So here this was another one that we made with, with weaving. And when we put the light through it, because it's a bit translucent, the light will actually capture itself inside the plastic and bounce off and illuminate it slightly. We hope this video has given you some ideas of how to use milk bottle plastic. So good luck with the challenge and we look forward to seeing your submissions.